on one of the personnel and insurance committee meeting towards this at this time. Present on the staff meeting, Mr. Hoffman Silver, other members of the council, the administration. We have a committee today, items one through three. I will read them off to you, then follow with an explanation, and then we'll move forward. Item number one is to a resolution confirming the appointment of Greg Foster, Director of Human Resources. Item number two is a resolution confirming the appointment of Denise Seastrunk as Director of Community Services. Item number three is a resolution adopting proposed pay plan and classification plans for classified employees for the city of Alexandria. And to the administration, to this council, staff, present visitors. I've had a chance over the last couple of days to review where we are so far as our city's concerned. I've reviewed over the last couple of days where we are and just looking at our budget. As a councilman, I have a grave concern to make sure that in government we run the best way and the most efficient way, the way we spend our tax dollars. I'm concerned about where we are right now so far as I was spending this concern looking at all of our top level positions. I'm concerned about if we're duplicating services within our city. I'm concerned about spending, 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 whether it's at our department levels or whether it's at the legal division level of our city. We need to take a strong look at where we are so far as government spending in the city of Alexandria. I'm concerned about where we are with our fund balance and where we should be, where we can be for our future. And with all that said, I would like to recommend to the city council, to the mayor and this administration, for us to take a strong look at over the next few weeks with Myron Lawson Chairman, me personnel chairman for the city council, a complete review from top to bottom, from the highest paid salary to the lowest paid salary, and also based on this pay plan. I've had a chance to review the pay plan, I've looked at it, I've reviewed it from top to bottom, looking at minimizing salaries to maximizing salaries. There's a lot of concerns in those departments in those respective areas. I want to totally impact how it's going to affect city government over the next fiscal year, whether it's 1.5 or whether it's 2 point something million that's going to come out of a budget. And that's just my concerns. I think as a city council representing people all across that city, I think we have that right next to the administration to do that. I think it's fair for the people of all city to have that. Uh, the mayor stated to me he sent down information pertinent to what I may be stating right now. But I think, you know, for all concerns and duplicating services, if any, you know, we need to take a strong look at the way we're spending tax dollars. You know, we have to be competitive in the market, which I understand, uh, looking at government as it is, you know, being competitive in the job market and looking at what other cities are doing. I have a great concern uh, on another item on our agenda today. As we look at hiring a utility director, we don't have one. I'm concerned about that. We have asked for one for the last uh, two or three months. I know the administrative have, administration has been working until it's managed to get one. But those are great concerns that I have. I just don't want to put people in place when in this city, in the city government, without taking a strong look and making sure we make the right decisions. I know Mr. Foster, you're here. Ms. Seastrunk, you're here today. And I hope you understand. Uh, the, uh, what I'm asking, what I'm asking from this administration. I know if you're waiting, and you're waiting to take your positions and working for this great city. So that's where I am, and I would like to open up the floor for any further discussions, but on this day, I would like to ask that we not, to this committee, uh, take any actions on item one and two, and that we strongly hear from the consultant, uh, just information-wise, and that we have that special meeting on Max and Mr. Lawson, uh, uh, as finance chair to have a joint meeting on personnel and finance to take a complete overview from this administration, you know, from top to bottom on the organizational structure, on every division, every employee to make sure we doing what's best and what's right for the people of our city. And that's where Roosevelt Johnson stands. I just want to share it with you today. I don't, I don't know if that's a blanket deal. Uh, first, I would like to reverse this order and go on number three. 
Uh, I think we're going to start to discuss that at length, but if you recall at our last meeting, I suggested to Mr. Page that he review all of this to review why it should happen, how it fits in with the general configuration with personnel in the city and how we would best do it. Secondly, uh, I too have studied this thoroughly and gone over it. More importantly, we as a council did we did approve the capital budget, and number three is embraced at no additional cost, and it shows that didn't. So I mean, that, I, I hope that we are all understood when we get us through that budget that this was part of it. Now, there's nothing, there's nothing perfect. There's no perfection, but the main reason I suggested that Mr. Page would do everything at the last meeting was to find out how we compared favorably or unfavorably, and if there were errors in. in the general plan, and I think he satisfied everyone's needs, and he did give you a detailed printout of all that. Is. Now, I got a sheet this morning with a lot of other lines. That's after the fact, but we did do that. And I'd like, that's the reason I'd like to at least address this first and then see if we can make a more value judgment. And, and I'd like to thank you for those comments, Mr. Silver. Um, but one thing also I, I think is a good question that comes before the citizens of our great city is budget wise, is this going to affect us? On the, minimum, on the minimum side, we're looking at the pay plan, 1.5 uh, uh, on the maximum side, over $2 million or, or per budget year. Mr. Lawson. Yeah, and I don't want the public to misconstrue what you're saying, uh, my dear colleague. Uh, it is going to be additional costs. Uh, what we did was we uh, guesstimated that additional cost in this current uh, fiscal year, uh, which uh, we anticipated that costs uh, being a, uh, to the extent that we have to amend the budget uh, to uh, address the pay plan, is what you're saying. Uh, you suggested that we don't have to, but we did anticipate, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, Mr. Crutchfield, the projected uh, increase at uh, budget time for the pay plan. Oh, that's correct. This was within our projection that we anticipated. Yeah, uh, we had hoped that this pay plan would be in place uh, prior to the beginning of the budget year on May 1st. Uh, of course, that, that didn't happen. However, we did prepare for uh, the implementation of it in the budget. So it would take no uh, budget amendment to implement the plan. And the cost of this plan? The cost, the cost of implementation I, and I don't have that with me. It's in a, around a half a million, I think. Is that right? Yes. right the, the additional funds are pr already approved. Yeah, in the, that's correct. In we the understand that, right? But I, I just asked for the implementation of the plan. Uh, Three hundred thirty-eight thousand. What you're suggesting is that we hear from a uh, consultant. Right. Which I don't think that's inappropriate. Uh, we waited a year, which we anticipate this taking, uh, I think the uh, time frame was July, it would have been done last year. So I think it would be very, very prudent on uh, this body's uh, behalf to uh, ask for an explanation as to how uh, the figures were uh, uh, obtained. Did they get the information I requested uh, at the previous meeting? What was that? I want to know the positions with the highest attrition rate. I also want to know the positions that uh, had uh, the greatest retention rate. Yeah, I think those uh, records are maintained by the Civil Service Department. We took that this morning. It's in our box. Yeah. this morning. Any other questions or comments? Uh, just one question. What does that have to do with the appointment or not of the vision heads required by the city charter. And we have, that's what you, the two positions up today are in the city charter. Uh, if, if, I think what Mr. Silver was trying to point out is that all of the positions that are mayoral assistance minus one, that is Mr. Page, is up today. Darren, you just being recorded. Uh, all of those positions were already budgeted and approved. Uh, the only one that had an impact for 
one that had an impact was Mr. Page. Those were all approved items with the fiscal note of zero. So I just want to make sure that despite the speech we heard from Mr. Johnson about spin, 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 that's not the case. These are value-added positions. The city has received in, its, in those mayoral assistance, if you look at uh, Mr. Hess and all the others, we've received capital outlay in the millions. We have received grants. Uh, one of the positions was to take a person who was a part-time employee and bring them from, I think, 35 or 36,000 to the mid-40 range, and that person's been working full-time for almost six months and got a $250,000 grant already. So these are value-added positions that these folks have essentially paid their salary for, for four years and what they've already brought to the city. I want to make sure that uh, it's very clear that the administration on January 15, July 29, July 31, and on numerous other occasions has sent to the city council detailed, several page long explanations of all administrative reorganization, confirmation requests, and other matters pertaining to employees. So the notion that this needs to be done now uh, it is just a little bit awkward and strange when you have people here uh, that, that uh, understood something very different. And I hope, uh, given some of the commentary, that it's not because folks are running for election now, which it was my understanding from comments to me last night were made by council persons to wait until after the election cycle to decide these important matters. If, if we need to have division heads in place, and we do, let's get them in place and I'll submit a plan and we'll do something about the mayoral assistance. If, if you don't think they've had value, even though we can prove it on paper, that's the appropriate thing to do, not fail to fulfill the vision heads in the chart. Now, Mr. Johnson keeps pointing out the utility director, but he would add to that list of vacancies two more folks to that. That's not sound uh, policy at all for the city of Melbourne. What two folks? I, I don't think, in that retrospect, I don't think I added two more. Well, now we're Wait, let me speak. Let me speak. I'm chairman. Let, let me speak. Uh, I'm chairman's committee. Let me speak. Not Mayor Roy. But on the front end, I think the public, you know, not political from Roosevelt Johnson. You talk about someone said on who's running based on what. I think a public has a right, whether we have a financial committee meeting tomorrow, whether it's a week from now, to complete the details that must be taken care of in this matter, but I want to make sure it's done right and done fair on behalf of the people of the city. And I think you should respect that, Mayor Roy, to make sure that to make sure that we have in place so far as government spending in every position to make sure we're not duplicating services based on what you want to offer, based on the charter, and based on what this council wants to approve. That's what Roosevelt Johnson wants the best for what's going to be in place for this city to make sure we're not duplicating services, to make sure we're going to do the right thing and the best thing. I think we can't help but offer that. Because, you know, when the public sees these high price salaries spending, 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 I think they have a right to know why, you know, this person is making $80,000 a year versus what another city is making. I think they have a right to know how their tax dollars are being spent. I think we owe that to the public. And, and as personnel chairman, you would know that when Joe Page was in that position, he made 79000 and that the position Greg Foster is a thousand dollars different, it's eighty thousand. So again, these were things that I inherited when I came in, these salary structures for the division heads who are unclassified. Uh, it, it again is notable that it's not okay now, but it was before. If we want to look at payment of salaries across the board, that's fine, but we've never been asked to do that. What we were asked to do is to look at market-based salary uh, for a lot of folks, and, and all of you are aware of that. The reason we can't find a utility director is because we can't pay the, the uh, competitive level for utility directors in today's market. And, and that's probably the principal reason we're having trouble filling that position. But again, we're, we're going to need to, there are going to be positions cut as a result of the failure to act today, no matter what we do, because there has to be to make sure that we can fulfill the division here. Folks will have to go back into their division position, and that's what we have to do. But what I'm asking you is this, and I say across the board, you see it's never been asked before, but I'm asking you, the administration on this day, to do it. Uh, 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 wait, wait. 
as Mr. Lawson, the chair of the Financial Committee, for us to look at these budget items, to look at, confirm these individuals as B, but also take a look at the different divisions uh, to see where we are, so forth as personnel, so forth as human resources, public works, to look at where we are in government and where we are with this pay plan. It could be done tomorrow, it could be done a week from now, but I want it done. Uh, but, but we're mixing classified and unclassified. I'm talking strictly about unclassified workers. You're talking about classified workers. That has a function with civil service and other pieces. Uh, Ms. Seastrom, for example, is starting at a lower salary than where Ms. Harris was in the position because she earned seniority as she went up, uh, up the chain and had been there for several years. So again, we were fiscally responsible in how we planned and did these salaries. Uh, we had an objective process for these appointments, a committee that met with them and sent the names to me to decide whether to send to you. Uh, I didn't participate in that committee until meeting with them at the end. They went through the committee process with them. Uh, Mr. Uh, Johnson was on the committee, Ms. Lisa Harris, Ms. McGill, and Mr. Crutchfield. Those were the four people that did that. Uh, I just want to make sure that when the public hears a notion that this administration is uh, spending that there is a fiscal note of zero until you get to Joe Page in one other position that has already been approved by this council in the budget process. So this is not anything new and it was all disclosed over the last year. Uh, for it to be suggested this is something kind of happening today is not accurate. I just want to make sure the record is clear. Uh, Mr. Lawson, if I could recognize you as finance chair, would you agree you know, uh, 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 to the process that what we're asking for? I think it's always an honorable uh, thing to do if you're looking at uh, whether we're spending tax dollars for it. I, I have not seen any documentation that says uh, otherwise, nor have I seen anything, I guess, to uh, uh, substantiate. Uh, why don't we get this all set and just set a date in which we can come back and uh, get this done and have a couple of special meetings with the president? Uh, and then we can have some comparable salaries, salaries from other cities to see whether this is that what you're asking for. Right, correct. We're prepared to do that tomorrow, the next day, Tuesday, whenever you want. We're prepared. I don't want to see these uh, good folks. I think we have two good people right. uh, out there in uh, limbo. But at the same time, I don't think you're uh, not asking for things that would be necessary. I do have one concern that uh, hit me. And then uh, I did read uh, most of the documentation. Ms. Uh, Harris's job, uh, the duplication is also that uh, I'm interested in. In part, I'm, I'm, I can't remember the entire job, but it, it, I guess it kind of concerned me that she would be looking at cooperative endeavors. Um, I, I was trying to see how that would fit versus the legal division. Um, she, she doesn't do the legal part of vetting out cooperative endeavors. Her position. Uh, like other staffs uh, that with a $200 million corporation, something this size, you have policy folks. We have created a policy division that never existed in the city. The job of Lisa Harris is to take all the NGO requests, which many of you have fought, been following in statewide news that the governor also has been doing, which is to put objective criteria into non-governmental organizational requests, NGOs. And her job, because we get so many, is to go through those make sure that we are requiring proportionate deliverables in anything that we do, and then also to monitor those. She's the contract monitor for every contract absent those professional service agreements in legal or engineering. Uh, she would monitor all of those, uh, be in charge of all citywide planning, and be a policy, uh, the chief policy officer for the city on its diversity initiatives and everything else that we do from a purely policy standpoint. We separate policy operations and development. That's the organization that we've created. They overlap every day, but we still separate those functions, uh, and then we have meetings where those functionaries at the top can meet and discuss them. Uh, her job position is, is not duplicative of any other. In fact, it never existed until uh, its creation. We think it's critical to have policy being formulated in a city our size 
particularly given where we stand in this region economically and the influential sphere Alexandria has over some eight to nine parishes uh, in the state of Louisiana. And I'm, I'm just saying that one yeah, that's I'm not saying stuff. the other piece, but in your uh, opinion as mayor, you saw no one, th no one within your ranks uh, that could uh, fulfill the responsibilities that you're asking these additional people I, to. I, I think that probably, Mr. Lawson, it's an excellent question. You could uh, load up duties on folks and, and do that. But as I pointed out when I came into the office, what had happened was uh, at the end of Mayor Randolph's administration, it was down to a bare bones crew. And what we did was come in and identify where our needs were Everything that we've done, except for the diversity officer, which actually that too has been following a transition plan of the most diverse group of individuals ever to look at the city administration and its function. That group of people, 75 people from all over this community made these recommendations and we have followed them to the T. Each one of them, including Lisa's uh, position that was created. We also were pressed by the council to have a true recreational head. She also takes on that entire function along with her other duties. So if a recreational head was something we were pushing for anyway, to add all the policy duties we thought was value added. Uh, in addition to that transition team review, uh, we follow best practices. We research uh, hours at a time what other cities our size are doing. Uh, we are a $200 million corporation. Uh, having a diversity officer, although not included in the original transition team report, we did include what I've called diversity in action, which was a plan that you have seen part of roll out with AFEET and AFII and those other programs in the small and emerging business program. The other half of that, I believe, is community outreach. Uh, so to answer your question, do I see duplication? There has been duplication when you look at uh, Human resources, when you look at Sheila Matoire's position as EEO coordinator, when you look at Vaughn's position and Joe's at first blush, someone would say, can some of these be collapsed? I have told you, Mr. Lawson, I believe so. I believe so. Uh, the question of how to do that, though, required us going through a process we felt of creating what was a best practice position. Uh, uh, corporations in this area have the chief diversity officers. I believe it's important. Lately, I've been told, and it's sort of a grand irony, that we've seen your division heads and the, and the diversity achieved. Why do you need a diversity officer? The fact that the question is asked probably indicates somewhat of the answer. We, we do need a diversity officer because we need to go out and educate the public and, and have outreach. I believe that the better the city embraces that diversity and brings people to the table, the better functioning city will have, the more you bring people who have value to add to the table. And I stand by uh, Mr. Page's position today, and I will tomorrow. Uh, if there's some collapsing that needs to be done, uh, then I will consider that, and I already have expressed that to you as finance chair, that perhaps of those three, two positions make more sense than three. But in, with that exception only, Mr. Lawson, all the other positions, I believe, have paid for themselves at this point and have created a presence for the city of Alexandria on a national and state level that is very positive, not only for the administration, Mr. Lawson, but for this council, that this council has talked about, that the things we're doing in this city are talked about in Baton Rouge and talked about at the national level as a progressive, a progressive policy-driven city, and that's the purpose of Lisa's job. I think Lisa Harris is one of the finest human beings I've met in my life, and I believe that her, having her as chief of policy is necessary for the function of the city of Alexandria. Um, I still have some questions in, in that regard. The duplication of efforts it is something that, that I have that leads me some questions. You know, why why would we have people doing the same jobs and stuff? And that's, that's not good. I just don't see it. I've got the job descriptions I, I, here. We have an EEOC officer, and now we, we're saying we, we need somebody else to watch over that. Mr. Marshall, just for the record, we are 
already had brought back that EOC officer into and under the structure of Greg uh, in this reorganization. EO should always be a function of HR, and we put it back. She's now gone back into that uh, uh, aspect of the city, so there's not a separate mayoral assistant for the EO position. So we've already corrected that problem before we even came to you. And I, I'm sorry if, you know, I think I'm sending out too much information to you most of the time, and somehow uh, we're, we're not meeting in the middle, but we've already done that correction. I still got questions, still, man. And in order for us, I agree with Roosevelt, the utility director is the main thing that we really need to be concentrating on. We, we got people out here that are struggling to pay utility bills. And we need to make sure that we got a full-time person there on top of it. Mr. Crutchfield has been doing a great job, but to try to manage the finance department and the utility department, that's a pretty good juggling act. But we need to get that person. We need to try to find that person. When you have people out there that's trying to pay a utility bill and they look at somebody, we, we want to spend extra money for extra positions, and they can't make those ends meet. Uh, you know, that, that's, that's my whole take on the whole thing. And, 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 and we, 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 we uh, for a consultant, for another consultant, for another consultant. We, we don't, we, our policy is not to hire consultants when we can have staff persons fulfill the job, and that's exactly what we've been doing. That's the purpose of the staffers as opposed to hiring more consultants. Uh, I would challenge anyone to find something that's happened that affects someone's utility bill at home that has to do with Mr. Crutchfield's management and the team of individuals that are high up in utilities right now that has adversely affected the citizens in these several months. Mr. Crutchfield does not manage the day-to-day -day operations. Mr. Michael Marcott and a team of folks do that every day. And indeed, Mr. Mike Marcott is serving as interim assistant uh, director of utilities now and has been doing quite a good job of that. So uh, David is there to have the signature authority over things that we need at the division level, but, but we are functioning well. We do want a permanent director. We think that permanent director should have some, some finance background anyway at some point. It doesn't mean David, it means someone else uh, because that business has changed from the days when just an engineer ran the utility. Our whole dynamic with DG Hunter has changed. It is going to be difficult to find that and we will continue to make that search. Uh, Mr. Smith, then Mr. Lawson. Uh, no, I just want to clear for the records that uh, Mr. Hobbs, I mean, ones that have been here that like Mr. Crutchfield's job, he's always been over the utility office. Anybody that's over the finance, the utility department falls under him. When Mr. Sonny Craig was here, he was handling the other part. It's always uh, that's, uh, on the charter. That's, 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 that's the way it's, already, it, it's yeah. always been two, two positions. One handle, you know, the, the, uh, the utility purchase from well, Clico and the gas purchase and all that, that was under Mr. Craig. Uh, Mr. Gail Jackson then was always on the finance part. But I, where, where I'm coming from with that, Mr. Smith, and, and to the man, is that that utility person, we got to monitor the prices of natural gas and, and all of the other utilities that's there. We, 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 do, we do this in, in our meetings, and, and Mr. Crutcher, like I said, he's doing an outstanding job. But, however, we still need that director, you know. We can, we can go out here and we can find other people to create other jobs, but to me, that person's position is more important to me than some of the other positions that you're asking for. Just for the record, Mr. Crutchfield has always been the go-to person on our vetting uh, committee for natural gas. Even when Marcus was here, they both monitored it every day, but David's knowledge of, of the market, uh, coupled with Marcus's at the time, uh, David was always somebody that we relied on because it becomes a finance question again, uh, a lot of that. I just want to make that very clear. Um, Mr. Lawson, then Mr. Silver. I think it's a consensus. I'm trying to make sure we move on, I guess, and quit recycling uh, uh, some of the conversation, but not to discount the importance of some of the comments. 
uh, I think we all agree that we should hire a director of utilities with a sense of urgency, first thing. Secondly, as finance chair, what I want to do, Mayor, particularly since it seems like it's the pulse of uh, the council to uh, get some additional data on.